Hey guys, so I had a request yesterday from Dylan who is doing a paper for one of his classes and I wanted to just answer it in a video. Um, I had offered to do a FaceTime or a chat with him personally, but it seemed easier to do a video so that all of you could benefit maybe from the information. So the question that he was asking was, what is it like doing a prearrangement with a family and how do you prepare them kind of for the future? And then also, what do you accomplish or do during a prearrangement or pre-need with a family? So the beginning part, it's kind of a very ambiguous, huge question because I have sat with pregnant people planning for the death of their child. I've sat with people planning for the death of their seven-year-old with cancer, you know, 40-year-olds dying of cancer, um, 80, 90 year old. So every spectrum. So every time it's a little different and you're trying to accomplish something different each time. So you have an imminent situation and you have a, just a pre-planning situation and they're very, very different feels to them. So an imminent situation, you're either sitting with somebody whose family member is dying or Hey Ryan, or you're sitting with the deceased, um, before they die and you're making some plans and it is often heavy. Um, there's no other word for it. You know that death is coming. You know that these people are gonna be in pain or that this person is not gonna be here soon. Um, it's always very surreal the first time you meet with a family or you go to someone's home and you sit next to the hospital bed and talk to the person that's dying and then three days later, you're called to the house and you're taking that person into your care because they've died. So it's a very surreal feeling because up until a week before, you hadn't known these people. They hadn't been anyone who would affect your life. And then all of a sudden there's someone who's there and then they're gone and then you're caring for them. So it's definitely um, an added side of emotion and connection that's added to situations, not just a death call, um, you've met the person and are, you know, sitting with them or praying with them or whatever is comfortable for you to do. Now, sometimes um, the prearrangement is done because um, they just want to give you one bit of information. There's, I've done so many pre-needs where the person just says, hey, I just want to make sure that my family knows I want amazing grace or hey, I just want to put my discharge paper on file. You know, it's just a simple, hey, I want something in writing somewhere for myself. And so they are just reaching out for you to be their filing cabinet for them for this information so that when they die, you can tell their family, hey, they wanted Amazing Grace played or hey, they wanted this done. And so it may just be that simple or maybe that they want to make the full arrangement as if it was at the time of need. Um, so emotion wise, you have all the spectrum there. So it may be just an information gathering session, or it may be planning because the person's dying the next week. So it really is all over the place. A huge thing is helping them to plan for what they're going to be doing at the time. So either giving them maybe the biographical sheet to fill in or giving them tasks to gather pictures, get clothing together, get information for the obituary, get biographical information, start thinking about your mom or dad's favorite things. Some people, um, hospice often will tell families, you need to call a funeral home and, and kind of get them involved. And sometimes they push them a little harder and say, you need to go do this. And I always say, are you sure you want to leave your loved one? Because sometimes they come to the funeral home and they don't want to be there. They want to be home with their loved one who could be dying any minute. And I've sat with families and they get a call from hospice while we're sitting there and their loved one passed or died. I hate saying passed. Um, and so, you know, it's, it is, it's a full spectrum of what you can encounter and what may be done. But all you can do is kind of put into their hands, if it is an imminent situation, what they can be doing to fill their time. Because they're just watching somebody die and you can't just sit there watching them. It's, you want something to do, you want to be proactive, you want to be helping the situation and planning for the next step is the best way to help. So they can gather together paperwork, they can find the discharge paper, they can get out life insurance policies, they can make lists of people to call, they can make pull bear lists and all sorts of things. So all of those things they can start planning ahead. 
also just gathering some of that paperwork if it is a just general pre-need gathering some of that to put in the file at the funeral home is always good to do if they want to put a photo on file if they want to put down song options things like that um, so then things you can accomplish I always when I sit down with someone I say well what brought you in today and what are you hoping to accomplish with our time together because this leads you down which path you're gonna go initially in my career I didn't do this and I would sit down expecting that somebody wanted to do the full shebang and give me money and go on and you know just do it all and we'd start down there like all we wanted to do is get a little bit of information so they're almost more information seeking so you really have to sit back and find out why are they there best question you know you can ask and don't just say hey so why are you here what are you hoping to accomplish today and what would you like when you leave here to to be done for you for the future or for your mom for the future um, because some people may just want to be spending down in order to apply for state aid also that's another big one that people come in for is they just need to get rid of some money so they can then go apply for state aid so they just need the paperwork that you would provide them and they need to put the money in so it's set aside for their funeral so they can then get um, some state aid to go into a nursing home or a facility um, so then once you ask that question you're gonna know are we just here to get information are we here to look at caskets are we here to pick out urns are we here to just find out what this process is about are they price shopping are they you know what is their goal thank you Jim um, so it is a broad spectrum Dylan but you know there's a few key points to look at there is finding out what the goal is where they're at in the process is somebody actually dying um, because sometimes you assume that somebody is maybe near the end but they really are just getting information or you think they're getting information and one of the people is terminal and you don't realize it because they don't divulge that until they're comfortable enough with you halfway through the period to share that with you and then and it does it catches you off guard you're like okay so you're gonna be dying next week okay that changes it doesn't change much but it it changes I think your approach because then rather than being in this business mode you're then like in a cons almost consoling mode which is not exactly what they want they don't want somebody to feel sorry for them they want to accomplish what they're there to accomplish so try and help them by doing that you're helping them the most they don't need your pat on the back and hug as much as they need you to help them feel fulfilled in what they're trying to do when my grandpa was towards the end of his life in his 90s um, he told me he just wanted to take care of his funerals and wanted it to be done um, for him and his wife my grandma and very very shortly after that it was the next week that he went from being sharp as a tack to full-blown dementia and died within another week or two so it was him needing to know things were in place him needing to know that his wife was going to be taken care of and finance was were done and and all of that um, I did give him a little lie and told him that I was doing two full traditional burials for $2,500 each <laughs> because he's he's in that generation and one of those people that he was only going to choose cremation because of the cost and I knew that and so I knew if I told him I could do a traditional burial for 2500 that he would go along with what he really wanted and, and he did um, but that's what you kind of have to do sometimes <laughs> is play along so uh, hopefully Dylan that answers your questions if you guys have questions about pre-need pre-arrangements other things that you're studying or, or doing re reports and, and things on by all means reach out to me never apologize and it's always okay to send me private messages um, to email me at carry at carryworthy.com and to reach out if I don't have time to maybe answer we have so many other really good directors in this group um, who are longtime directors and bombers funeral directors who are um, professors at some of the colleges in mortuary science so I'll help connect you with somebody who can get you some great information for your projects that you're working on so talk to you guys soon thanks so much bye